Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. Um, I'm going to fit the torque tube to the axle. So that requires me to, first of all, just give this drive shaft a little light wire brush. I'll just do it by hand, just to take any flaky bits off. And then I'll make a gasket and bolt it, bring the torque tube in and bolt the torque tube on. So I'll start by just giving it a clean and what I'm going to do is just wipe it with oil so it's oily. And I'll probably use chainsaw oil so it kind of just clings on. Okay, I've just um, realised I might have to delay fitting this. I might have to delay fitting this because there's um, there's a uh, seal down there, and to get that seal out, you have to get that split bearing out. And I'm th I think I've got one of those seals. So I need to look to see if I can find the seal and then I think I'm going to have to make a tool to get that split bearing out. So, we're, so I'll stop the camera and kind of regroup. When I'm ready I'll bring you back. Right, I've had a go at making a tool. Down there, right down there, kind of roughly at the six o'clock position is a hole. And I think I've, I need to get a tool that grabs into that hole and then kind of winds the bearing out. Now I've had a go at making a tool, but I don't know if it works. Can't seem to get it to go in and grab. Well, that's in the in the slot. I think it's coming out because of the radius that I've got in there. I think I might have shaped this a bit wrong. That's in the slot. It's coming out as I turn it. So I, th I think the diameter of this thing might be too small. There's a video on YouTube. I'm going to go and have a look at see if I can see that. See if I can do it, see what I'm doing wrong. Okay, I've made the peg a bit bigger. Don't know if it's too big. And put some weld there to kind of up the diameter a bit in effect. Right, so think about this. Hey, it came then. Not all the way out, but it come part way out. How about that then? A little bit of perseverance and concrete rush. There you go. There's the bearing. Um, sleeve. That's good, isn't it? Out it came. 
there's the tool. That's the hole it has to locate. And actually, it's, it is quite a close size, that, isn't it? That isn't a hole, that's, that's a lump. I, I believe you have to turn it clockwise, <laughs> clockwise to remove it and clockwise to put it in until that, that lump locates in a hole that's drilled. So that worked, look at that, cost me nothing. I think having this nice and firmly located helped, to be honest. Okay, I've got to get that bearing out now. Might be able to get up the other end with a piece of tubing. That, not the bearing, that's seal. <laughs> Hope I've got a seal. Right, there we go. Oh, what's that? There's the seal. A minor little hold up to the job, but you know, not much. Recovered well. Okay, good. So that, that worked well. Let you have a look at that. So I'll go through my parts and f see if I can find the seal. I'm pretty sure I've got one somewhere because I bought three and I've only used two. As far as I know, it's not a common seal, commonly available, you know, just by looking up a part number. I don't honestly know that. If somebody does know a part number for a generic number, I'd be interested to know. The other important thing is is that it's fitted in such a way around that it's designed to stop the oil and grease coming from the UJ cavity into the torque tube. It's not there to keep the axle oil into the axle. In other words, let's have a look. Uh, that's the end that I hit on there. And this is the end where you can get your thumb under the edge of the edge of the lip seal. Okay, there's the so there's the seal, there's the bearing, both successfully removed. Okay, I will clean my hands and I'll turn the camera off while I look for the other parts. Ta-da! Twenty minutes of frantic searching later. Okay, that area looks nice and clean. So this one goes... It's, it's not easy to see, but there is a little gap there. And there isn't a gap there. So the gap, the part without the gap goes towards the axle. <laughs> as it falls over on the way in. Let's give this a wipe and all being well we should be able to go back in. There's the tool. I uh, just felt that I just felt that slot into place then. To 
be honest, I, I tried to withdraw the tool and it didn't seem to want to come out. So until it slotted into place, it might it might be so close it wouldn't come out. Unless I didn't just didn't wobble it enough. Not sure. So all looking good down there now. A couple of little bits of dirt there I need to just get out. Dirty glove, get a rough shape. There's my rough shape. There's him. Scissors. It's not too dirty up the middle, it's not too bad. I used a relatively thin gasket material. The elusive Hylomar. Now where did I decide I was going to put that? Here. In plain sight. I haven't got enough. Um, I haven't got enough ceiling height to put it on. You know, from above. I have to. I have to lean this forward. I'll put some grease on this area here to lubricate the seal. I'll put a couple of bolts in just to make sure it stays in place. Okay, there you go. Okay, that's the Final little bit of the torque tube, drive shaft, shortening, straightening, welding, bending, straightening, overdoing it, bringing it back. Checking for straightness of the drive shaft, correcting for straightness of the drive shaft, checking for straightness of the concentricity of the torque tube, correcting that. Now, on reflection, I, I believe that that method that I used right at the end, which was to just warm it with the oxyacetylene and then um, chill it with a wet rag, was the best way. Far less messy than doing it with weld. But, you know, like I say, when you've only done one or two ever, you have to learn as you go, don't you? You, you find out what works better. I'm quite pleased with that. Okay, thanks for joining me in the garage then. Uh, I'll bring you back when there's a bit more to show. In the meantime, take care of yourself. Bye.
Hello. Look, it's the 59 Flatty. Um, I'll show you what I've been doing over the last couple of days. Um, I have run the old-fashioned Buma um, valve seat cutter down all these valve seats. I haven't addressed the bowls yet or the ports yet on this side. Okay, on this side I got my die grinder. Now I've att attached a, a lamp to my die grinder just to help me a little bit because it's, I don't know, I'm finding it difficult to see what I'm doing. So I took my die grinder with that, um, oh, I don't know what they call it, tulip shaped tip is it? Something like that, like a barrel shape. And I have, um, now you've got to understand that all these things are really horrible, right? All, all of these um, bowls and everything. So I've kind of cleaned up the bowls. You can see where it's still a bit of pitting. I've got a little bit of work to do there, look. Now that I'm looking again with this lamp. Bear in mind when I'm wielding the... Um, die grinder. I can't really see it as well as this. So I need to identify where I still need to just have a little go. Let me move my hammer. I was using that hammer to hold the light. So there's another inlet. There's another inlet. So I've cleaned up those bowls. They were just completely crudded up. And I've cleaned up cleaned up the um, inlet tracks. You can see there's a lot of pit in there, but let me just cast your mind back to that, how it looks when I pull the manifold off on the back of the truck. They were just full of, well, God knows what, you know, full of stuff, weren't they? You can see it looks, but that's not gonna slow it down, is it? That um, rust in that, in that area there. Well, obviously it needs to be, you know, not flaky rust, <laughs> but you know, it should be okay. And, uh, and the exhaust ports, uh, however it may be, the exhaust ports I've cleaned, cleaned up as well. The, 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 um, <coughs> the valve bowl areas on the exhaust and you, you know, just a little bit of a clean up into that area there. So actually I think these are looking not too bad now. There's the exhaust. I recently bought a another valve seat cutter and I've just run those briefly on all of the seats as well. I've rubbed my finger over that so it looks dirty but it's kind of smoothed them out a little bit. Okay, I can still see some pitting in that one. I still need to have another look at that one. There's a little bit of pitting on that left-hand side. These seats were pretty bad, to be honest. Again, there's some pitting on that one, but I'm hoping that that pitting is outside of the valve seat area. That one's just about... Okay, that one looks quite nice, actually. That one's got pit in, so I might need to revisit that. Maybe just try the, uh, the... The new valve seat cutters that I've got are a British Sykes Pickavant package, but they're all labelled up as New Way USA, the cutters. And they, are, they do seem pretty aggressive, actually. The, the beauty of them is you can drive them with a hand drill. Not hand drill, you know, a powered, powered drill. The other thing I've done is cleaned up this area here because on many of these, the, the, there was corrosion in this area so the line, edge of the liner was sticking up. So I've kind of done a mini relief there. Not a relief, just 
a smoothing out of the corroded area which has lowered that area there and I need to chamfer the edge of the liner. Same there, all these ones that were badly corroded have been kind of just smoothed out with, with the die grinder. Now that leaves me as, uh, as a slight quandary because this one wasn't badly corroded so in theory the compression should be higher on this cylinder but I might well maybe I should just leave it alone I've yet to make the decision as to whether to you know just kind of reduce this down a little bit to kind of match the others maybe just give it a just a gentle little mini relief not a massive relief job on this side, this is more how it looked. Can you see that there's an edge there and there? That's I have to smooth that out. And again, here you can see this side needs smoothing out. This side's actually, you know, you wouldn't think this was the same chamber, would you? This side as that one there. And th this needs smoothing out. And that's kind of a bit halfway between. But you can see the amount of you can see the amount of crap in here that needs to be dug out. The, the exhausts aren't too bad, to be honest. You know, all this needs to be cleaned up. The next thing I'm going to do is to basically give this side the same treatment as I've just given the other side. So hopefully it should all come out looking nice. I'm a bit concerned about that seat there and that one there because I had to go so deep to get rid of the pits I might be too far in on those. Anyway what I've been doing, I've been using my die grinder but I've actually I've decided that I prefer to run it just at a relatively low speed so it's not kicking up tons of mess but I'm, I'm using the vacuum cleaner as well so it's quite noisy so I, I haven't been filming I don't think there's really any real to be gained I suppose I could film it because I'll speed it up and it won't be too noisy yeah so maybe I will just set it up and let, let the camera run and I'll, I'll kind of give you this a rudimentary go over. Given this, I need to do a bit more there. I've given this just a rudimentary clean up to get the worst of the. Try and get it down to a bit. I need to do a bit more there. Look, you have to do a bit. Stop. Have a look and decide what you're going to do next. Given that a bit of a clean up. Given that's a bit of a clean up still heavily pitted but you know it was like that before and that well that I just did that in direct time so I can tell you from the video how long it took it wasn't very long at all it needs, needs quite a bit more work but you just have to have a first go at it and I'm not running that die grinder flat out I'm just running it very slow actually so that's it basically and then I'll just do a little bit on that exhaust one there you know and it, which doesn't take much I might as well just do that shall I do that yeah let's just do that Let's 
see if we can make that a bit better. Huh, blimey. Oh, that wasn't very good, was it? I did some great work then while you were looking the wrong way. I put the camera down, didn't realise it was pointing the wrong direction. Sorry about that. I've just um, had another little go at that porch. You can see there's some crustiness down the bottom there. I need to address. I'll get that from the bowl side. Um, but you know, every time you do a little bit, it comes out looking a bit better, doesn't it? I suppose is, you'd have to say. Okay, so that's a rudimentary sort of five minute. You know, just a little tidy up of that. A level one tidy, as Coldwell Motors say. Of that one particular, you know, cylinder, chamber, port. I will carry on and I'll show you how it looks when, you know, when I get to the next stage. I've done a rudimentary clean up on all of the ports. I did these ones yesterday so they're looking a bit not as shiny as they were. Well that one needs a bit more work down there. Look I've missed a bit there and maybe that one. But I've done these ones today. You can see how badly pitted and corroded they were. Um, I've cleaned up the port, the bowls there. Hang on a sec. Because when you do one, it, it puts a load of dust on it over all the others, doesn't it? So there's there's one of the exhausts there. There's one of the exhausts. There's a, an inlet. Another inlet. Another exhaust, exhaust inlet. So I've cleaned all those up. Now, this isn't a porting job, this is just to clean out any obvious um, corrosion and build up of crud. I've also gone along and blended the corroded parts of the chambers into the tops of the liners. That's probably the best example there. Blended those together. Here, you wouldn't think they were the same chamber. The inlet side is heavily corroded and the exhaust side is virtually untouched. So I've just kind of blended it in a little bit. And this one was probably the worst with heavy corrosion. Um, so it's got a bit of a swoop to it. And I might or might not, I'm trying to point, do something about that bit there. But it's all looking a lot better than it was. Let's have a quick look around the other side. Okay, this is the right hand bank. So this is cylinders one to four. And you can see just, just having left this kind of for a couple of days, because it's so um, humid, I suppose, because it's autumn. You know, the surface rust just formed on there. So same story here, cleaned up the bowls, cleaned up the ports. Um, you know, what can you say? The inlet bowls clean up quite well, actually. Yeah, we're not looking too bad, I don't think. So, so there we are, a little step forward, then a step in the right direction. Um, quite a bit of work there, to be honest. It's noisy work as well, that's why I didn't really film it. I just filmed doing that one there. I just filmed doing that one there. And um, I haven't filmed the rest. I might look at using some sort of flappy, flappy sort of abrasive paper on a stick sort of thing to kind of smooth things out a bit. Or I might just leave it and say, well, I'm not building a racing engine, you know. 
I don't like the look of that um, seat there. That one don't look too bright either. Okay, so there's a little, a little bit of an update. A uh, little bit of clean up still left to do. I've just done, like I say, the 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 rough. As Cold War motors say, say as Cold War motors say, the, the stage one tidy. So I've just done a mark version of a stage one tidy, which normally means it's done. <laughs> if stage one's good enough, <laughs> stage one it will be. What I need to do is see if I have a set of usable valves. I will take all the valves that I took out of this engine work out which ones are still functional and um, see how many I need to make up a set and then I'll kind of take it from there okay that's all for next time I'll catch you on the next one then bye hello welcome to Mark's garage I've come out to do some bending on these radius arms. These are a pair of radius arms that I got when I bought the axle that I originally had in this in here. But I never used them. They're not actually... The axle was like a 35-36 axle, but these radius rods came with it. I've bolted them on here. Now, interestingly, I had to clearance the radius rods in there because they were fouling these flanges must be machined slightly differently than the 3940 ones okay so what I'm going to do so I've bolted that one on there and I've bolted this one on there so what I'm going to do is heat this here and bend this one out and pull this one out until it's in line with this so then I will know that that piece there when I trim this off this will be at the right angle to receive this when I pull this one across to there if you see what I mean I'm kind of trying to do one end of one and the other end of the other I haven't quite fully worked it out yet but um, I think I have an idea of what I'm doing. Okay, I think that'll do. That's in line with that now.
Okay, the problem is I can't push it over because the lug's in the way. I think that'll be alright actually. I think that'll do. To remember which bits are hot. Whew, dust inside it. Okay, so. Okay. Repeat the operation on the other side, I think, if. If. The torch will reach, which I think it will just about. Yeah, I think that worked well enough to do it again. That'll do. That's going over, but it's kind of springing, springing back. So that will go there when it's in its relaxed state. Go do some. Um, Cutting and measuring now. So that's going to get trimmed down to the existing weld there. And I can fill it with weld. So if this is cut to about here, that'll be okay. I'll stop the camera there and bring you back when there's some more to show. I might not be able to do this because it's quite late now at night, so I don't really want to make too much noise. Little bit of progress there, just getting the axle tipped upside down was hard enough. I'll think of something quiet to do and do that. I'll probably sort out six decent bolts here and fit this area here. I found one, there's one. Thanks very much then, I'll bring you back when there's a little bit more to show. Cheers! Chopping the um, ends off the radius arms. I thought, um, I thought what I would do would be to just chop about an inch off and then see if there's like a spigot and there isn't one so I'm glad I did it like that because I can make like, because it's actually quite round at that point there and I can make a little piece that goes up inside just to help align the two pieces. Okay. Anyway, there's, there's my two pieces now. Bolted on here. We bolted on there. So I'm just going to put a starter cut there. And then that will be where I can saw it off. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. That's um, just ground on both sides. The, there is a mismatch, you see, on the on the sizes. Not so much this way, but there is a mismatch that way. But that's quite. I might just lift it a little bit, actually. That's about as good as it's going to get, I think. Bevelled both sides. 
what I'll do, I'll put a good tack there. I'll put a good tack there and a tack there and a tack underneath, I think. Nothing to do, is it? Just weld it up. It's bolted on tight at the back. Okay, let's get the welder fired up. Uh, I won't show the welding because I'm using my phone at the moment. And uh, it's not so easy to set up. Okay, that's tacked. There's a little tack on the bottom. Oops, that's tacked. There was a little tack on the bottom there. And um, a big tack on the top and a medium tack on that side. <laughs> okay, so what I'll do then, I'll, I suppose I'll leave that in place. And get the other side hooked up. Tack the other one. And uh, then take them both off and fu fu fully weld them. Okay, here's the other side, um, you know, bolted up, trimmed off, aligned. I've got a slightly bigger gap this side, not quite sure how that's came about. I think that's okay. Okay, there's the welded jobs. I tucked them on. I took them off, I laid them across there and just rotated them and welded them. This side was a little bit gappy and I think the metal, there was slightly more corrosion on the inside so I had a little trouble on this one burning through. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't all rusted away but it wasn't as clean as this one. This one, um, you know, was okay. I, I will kind of just lick the welds up a little bit just to tidy them up a bit. But um, the amazing thing was, and what I was surprised about, was I just had this end, you know, kind of not quite tight, but just a little bit loose. Both of those bolts just went straight in. And both of these bolts just went straight in. So, <laughs> you know, I thought it would have, um, I, you know, I, I kind of expected them not to be lined up. So anyway, that's, that's pretty good, I'd say. Um, I might just, you know, I'll have to decide what I'm going to do with those. I might just oil them or paint them, I'm not sure. Because they're hidden away under the car. I suppose just oiling them will just be asking for trouble later. They'll just tend to start to rust. Although they'll they last 100 years, you know what I mean? They're, they're just, they'll be fine. They're uh, quite substantial metal. Last night when I stopped doing this job, because I didn't want to make too much noise, I just came and put six these six bolts in here. I found six new old um, washers imperial washers you can only get metric now here you know unless you order them special off ebay but um and what i did was i put i put a bolt in without any washer and because these bolts had a plain shank to, to a certain point I looked and it did actually bottom on the threads with a gap here so I took each of these bolts and I just put two turns of more thread on them on them all uh, two to two and a half turns of thread and um, they're now done up nice now and these are good quality bolts they're a stronger quality than just the normal ones. These are actually what they use on um, prop shafts, bolting prop shafts. On. So there you go. So that axle as a unit, I mean, it's not rebuilt. It's in running order, but it's now been adapted to this, this vehicle. So there we are, radius rods 
are done. Nice and strong because they're the, the lighter type. The uh, 32 are just bent sheet metal and they're not particularly strong. I don't think these need to be particularly strong but you know no sense in building something weak when you can build it strong. Thanks very much for joining me in the garage then. I will catch you on the next one. Cheers then. Bye.